When defending the A side of Mirage, it can be difficult to know exactly what to do. Do you get close to the opponents up in a ramp or palace? Do you watch that connector run up for your teammates? Do you just play retake and CT spawn near that ticket booth? I'm going to look at Magis today, how he likes to defend this side of the map, talk about a little bit of what he does, so hopefully you guys can improve your defense on this side of Mirage. In a team sport, finding good teammates is crucial. Join a community of 700,000 users on Dream Team to search for players who play for fun, play competitively, or want to go pro. Register on dreamteam.gg today and stop playing with teammates who kill everything except the enemy. Find players, improve skills, and manage teams. Dreamteam.gg, the ultimate team building and skill growing platform. Hey guys, what is going on? I know there's been a lack of videos recently. So most of you probably know I've been coaching Order, so it's been like taking up a little bit of my time. If you didn't know that, you should be following my Twitter, keep you updated. I'm traveling a little bit at the moment, so if you guys are there, always cool to meet a couple of you. Now let's start with Magisk, of course, on the A side of Mirage and getting nice aggressive towards the A ramp. That's quite simple, that's a nice supportive flash towards middle, but if you're just gonna Molotov there, follow it with a nade, you're just gonna be able to get aggressive. The Molotov is very important in this because it does mask a lot of the sound of you approaching this A ramp for this fight quite quickly. And you can see when they do go for something fast, the T side, such as Liquid did here, it's a great deal of punishing and getting that early information at the beginning of the round. You can see it doesn't have to be a grenade, also done with a flash in this scenario. No one there, but it's just the other option you have. So nice and simple and easy. If you want to find a fight really early in the round, this is probably the correct way to go about it. And believe it or not, there are many ways just to play a ramp, never mind the rest of the site which we're going to cover later on. One thing Magisk loves to do is just get this A main information without really looking to commit to a fight. So you can see in this particular scenario, Astras are playing very off middle, they're allowing mid control to go towards phase in this scenario, they've got the three players in here towards a ramp looking for this information. And yes, yeah, so when it comes out A main or Palace, they've got it on lockdown. Same with the B site, as you can see on the map right now. What we're going to see is Magis go into one of the most common things that he'll do for his team, normally with a teammate watching Palace. So as I fast forward this one, he'll hopefully get in the position relatively soon. You see they're going to start moving away from the setup they had. Glaive wants to move out of the site. They want to move something towards CT. You can see they're potentially worried about... What exactly our rain is doing right now? Dupree has to make sure that no one's wrapping in here and that, yeah, just gonna collapse into someone's behind. But what we're gonna see is Magis doing what he often does, which is just jiggle this angle and wait for someone to peek before smoking it off since he sees Guardian. He's not looking for a fight in this scenario, but he gets the information and he follows up with a smoke and a nade before turning around in this particular scenario and concentrating on towards Nico. Glaive obviously had his palace as well, which is very important if you're playing this close setup, you need that one player watching palace either from a different position on the map. And then Magic's going to change up how aggressive he gets, walks into A remain to work out exactly what's going on when they had man disadvantage, does get traded, but you can see he's really mixing up his pacing, pushing into A ramp in this scenario, even after already spotting that first play. It seems almost like madness, but he waits a few seconds and goes back in. There's other scenarios as well where he'll do this. We've got this particular one here where he's just jiggling and then you can see because of where you normally throw the jungle smoke from, you can hear the pin of the grenade being thrown. So as soon as he hears that in this scenario, he's going to drop his smoke and again, it's the exact same thing. He's delayed that attack from the T side and it just allows his teammates time to rotate in. They understand and have good information what the T side was potentially trying to do and he's really denied that again, that nice and early information. And just one last thing about this position, it's again Magis doing the exact same thing, same phase game. But when there's pressure on the other side of the map, we're going to see how Magisk responds sometimes. Not always going to do this, of course you want to make yourself unpredictable, but as Guardian and Olov try and set up for this B fake so A can be a little bit weaker, we're going to see it does actually draw the rotation a little bit of Astralis. We're going to see as this utility comes out, device is going to hedge towards this side of the map. But what does Magisk do? He does not move an inch. In fact, he wants to go and find information as to what exactly is going on. So he's going to walk into a ramp, and this is best case scenario right now. He finds these two players, it means device is straight back here, he spots Nico trying to come out Palace, and just like that, instead of having players move towards the B site like FaZe had wanted, we've got all these players from Astralis on A, just that little bit of information Magis gets. So even if he doesn't get the initial kill straight away, maybe he only gets the one kill walking into A ramp, or even zero, just having that information for his team is incredibly important. So he's prepared to go looking for that information, as well as sometimes falling back. So once again, changing up what you do is incredibly important. So now that you're all thoroughly sick of a ramp, let's talk about the other aggressive position you can often play, which is up here on the scaffolding or balcony or whatever you want to play it, up near 
looking in towards the palace area. I want you to notice how Magisk positions himself right now. It's a little bit wider than you might see a lot of players playing. The more common angles, obviously, up on top of that ladder you can see right now, just there, or maybe further into the corner to conceal yourself a little bit more from ramp. But he's out a little bit wider, does leave himself a little bit more open to Tetris. But as per usual with everything Astralis or any high level team does, Teamwork involved. Dupree's got his ramp position and they've got mid thoroughly on lockdown with both Device and Glaive in here. So there's no worry at all from Connector. So he's out here a little bit wider, allows himself to control the fight a little bit more than you might see from other players. You can jiggle back and forth. But his reaction after finding these first two kills is another thing I really like. So good spray control coming out to find the second kill here. Smiths walk straight into it, pops the bomb, and he's going to drop this smoke right now, as well as that nade there. And that's one thing I found very interesting is that grenade, everyone thinks about the... You come out Tetris, you throw a molly off there and get Balk. No one ever does it reverse. So I actually really like that. No damage in this scenario, but it is definitely a grenade you can throw it every now and then. You expect yourself to be wrapped on too. The other thing you notice as well is while he's under here is this smoke makes it incredibly hard for anyone like Shox to try and will find that kill. And you see also flashes coming in from the CT player. I believe that is Dupree to allow Magis to move back out here towards default. So even if uh, this player here is down, it was Shox was a lot quicker to try and wrap out here and find the kill in towards under Balk. This smoke makes the angle a lot wider for him to find that player and delays a lot of time. Once again, rotation timings are very important. We've got the rest of Astralis all coming in here and Magis, even if he went down straight away, has done a great job of allowing his teammates in here to help out. Not the case, more flash, he's actually going to move back under Valk once they find the rest of the kills and know where he is. So yeah, I just like that utility, he drops down unders after finding those first two. And I like how he plays the angle a little bit differently up on scaffolding. So little different options for you. Uh, I've got other videos, I believe I did a video about Crims, more about connected, but he also play up here. So if you want a couple of other options, maybe check out that video as well. Now moving along to actually on the A side itself, you've obviously got triple box you can play, default, Got the firebox, that annoying corner you can only see once you jump into sandwiches, the T side. But Magisk, like everything else he does, he loves to be able to delay for his teammates to rotate in, as this is incredibly important, as I'm sure you're most aware. So, on the default position this time, once again, he's going to be facing just Palace. Notice he often picks one of these two entry points that he wants to face off against. So he's going to find Taco, and again, he's going to find both the players in this scenario. But notice how he plays. He moves himself around this default box just slightly, so he's less exposed to the A ramp runout. One, he knows it's extremely unlikely to have more than two players come out Palace. That's just how most teams like to play. You often go 3-2 or even 4-1, depending on how you want to go. Very rarely will you have less players coming out ramp in this kind of scenario. So he moves here in this scenario, and notice he doesn't peek too much until he's pretty sure of what's going on and his teammates have moved in. So notice he's peeking right now as Glaive is up here on top of the, this position here. The rest of his teammates are rotating. Device is having a look through this smoke, and this is when he's jiggling, and he's not overextending instantly and giving a potential trade straight away to Liquid. He's making them do the work to flush him out. So he's jiggling right now, just holding that Tetris jump out. And once again, you see the flash over from his teammate. He doesn't win the fight with the Liege, but again, there was the support there. There's more flashes coming in. You can see how the rest of the have all rotated. Device knows no one's crossed the site, so they have the advantage there, and Glaive's able to jiggle with this player in this situation. So he's on a Great job, even though going down, that flash didn't quite work out for him, but his teammates are all in here, and you can see Liquid are left really with not much to say. Elige has very low HP, they've lost two players, and yeah, Astralis know exactly where the bomb is. That's a great way to play these different positions. Default's a good one to do this from, and I just love the way that you see every single time Magisk has a plan, he's able to either cut off the rotational delay from ramp, or Palace, one of the two, and you always make sure he has an escape plan so that he's not exposed to the other one. He has to fight one of these entrances at a time, and just this general positioning is what makes Magisk such a good player on this particular site. And finally, we talk about the different off-site positions you can play as this A person. Well, obviously, you can play in connector, apply pressure here, such as this scenario where Stratos decide they want the AWP posted up towards on towards this ticket booth area, in towards A ramp. So he's going to be playing more of this connector supportive role. And as an execute comes in, we'll see how Magisk likes to react. So they're flashing back in here towards middle. You can see the flash for Glaive to peek in. But all Magisk is going to do is nade Palace as this attack comes in, and he's not even going to try and fight. He's going to be concentrating in here, enabling his teammate. You can see that Glaive's the one concentrating in here, applying pressure towards these players on the A site. The whole time, Magisk is, well, for the majority, I didn't pick a good time to pick this, he's going to be playing backs, making sure his teammates are enabled, along with Zipex, there's no flankers coming in. The player in Glaive does eventually go down, but these players are going to be applying pressure. Magisk finally goes down, but because of the pressure he's allowed his teammates to apply, all the smokes have faded, existence is forced to gamble, plant in the open, and it gives Zipex probably one of the easiest kills he's ever had the pleasure of dispatching. So, 
that's basically it for connector. You want to be concentrating towards mid, enabling your other players and applying pressure. You don't have to be running through these smokes. It's enough to throw utility. Similar to this clip here in CT Spawn. Notice again, Magic is happy. Just a Molotov and nade towards ramp where he knows he's going to do a good bit of utility damage. It's an eco in this particular scenario, so they're happy to all swarm in here. But again, if you can cut these players off with Molotovs and utility, if these smokes start to fade once again, you're in a very, very difficult situation, the T side. So these are the, really your roles when you're playing off the site. You don't need to brawl in or try and fight straight away, use your utility to maximum effectiveness, enable the rest of your teammates to apply pressure, and if you can stop the bomb from going down, you're going to be, as I said, in probably one of the best situations possible. And lastly, if you can be amazing at playing B as well, that's an extra added bonus. But that's actually it for this video guys, make sure to follow me on Twitter because I'm going to keep you guys updated with events I'm going to. My team actually did qualify for the EPL finals in Odense, so I'm going to be there, as well as hopefully more events in the future, so definitely follow me there, I'll keep you updated. And as per usual, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.